Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2021 Pong Star Pong Stars Fantasy Football League Commissioner debate. I almost got that out at, in the first take. Um, today, it's almost that, that time of year. Uh, football's almost here, but we do have to decide on a commissioner. Uh, I have been selected or in, invited uh, to moderate the debate tonight between our commissioner, Zach Eichton, the incumbent, who uh, you know is, has been running this league very successfully for a long time, and our perhaps ambitious challenger, uh, Mr. Sam Olson, uh, both our league or our team owners, of course, as well in the Punk Stars Fantasy Football League. So uh, just to clarify before we get started, uh, voting will happen soon after uh, the debate is aired for all to see. And of course, once the results are all in, uh, the commissioner, the either the new commissioner or the existing commissioner will once again be announced uh, for the 2021 season. Um, without further ado, I think we should get this thing on the road here uh, for all the viewers and listeners. So uh, we'll start with opening statements. Uh, I'm going to begin with the incumbent commissioner, Zach Eichton, um, who has been the commissioner of this league for as long as I've been a part of it. And so, uh, Mr. Commissioner Zach Eichton, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator and team owner Drew Mahold of the Gruesome Grinders. Um, it's, it's an honor to be here. Um, engaging in debate about the future direction of this league. Um, per my opening statements, I would like to say that uh, just I value uh, this league a lot. Um, and I found a lot of uh, passion along the way uh, since, since starting to run this league. When I, when I begun my uh, first stint as commissioner, I, it was a 2015 season. Um, and I have, of course, been the commissioner all the way through the 2020 uh, unprecedented COVID season. Um, I, I like to think that I have, uh, you know, brought a lot of value to this league, um, and certainly, um, enhanced the competition and spirit of this league, uh, before, uh, getting too far into, uh, what my qualities are, of course, I want to re remind the viewers, um, the qualities of my opposition. Um, as you can see, uh, from right here, I'm a two-time winner of this league, uh, meanwhile, my opponent has won one postseason game since 2015. Um, I have a more than 53% uh, win rate in the regular seasons. My opponent is uh, almost 10% lower than that. Um, coming into this, I believe I have the competitive spirit to win the drive and, of course, uh, the you know, overall charisma to continue being the leader of the Pong Stars Fantasy Football League. Thank you in advance right. for your vote. Challenger Sam Olson, uh, your the floor is now yours to follow that up. Thank you, Drew. Uh, I just want to say um, in my opening statements, uh, thank you, Commissioner Eichton, uh, for all that you have done uh, bringing this uh, league from what it was with six uh, six teams um, on ESPN in Bernie Hall their sophomore year of college uh, to what it is now where it's a 10 team dynasty league the move to sleeper uh going through the covid year i think you've done an uh, an amazing job uh, being our commissioner for for these seasons uh but that being that being said uh good things do eventually die out and we need new blood and a new vision uh, moving forward and i think that is where i come in uh to this picture to help move the Pong Stars Fantasy Football League forward into the future with a new set of eyes and a new set of leadership. Uh, as you mentioned in my in your opening statements, uh, my record is, as a GM and as an owner, um, I do want to point out that I did start fantasy football actually with this league. Uh, this was the first uh, franchise I had ever owned. Um, I feel like I have built the Google team names into something that I'm proud of today. Uh, but my record should not be a part of the commissioner debate because that is not what we need a commissioner for. A commissioner should not put his team and his own personal wealth uh, ahead of the betterment of the league. Uh, I think that is where I will certainly have a different perspective than uh, the current commissioner. I did. And that is, that is where I will kick it back to you, Drew. Awesome. Uh, very uh, solid opening statements by both parties here. Um, you know what? We're just going to get right into this because, uh, you know, there's there's no reason to waste any time here. So, uh, 
we're going to dive right into the COVID-19 policies set forth by the NFL. Uh, so obviously these have garnered, the, garnered a ton of the attention um, over the past month or so. Um, and really the big one is that Commissioner Roger Goodell of the NFL has said uh, some serious uh, punishment possibilities here for teams that have an outbreak within their own team um, with uh, actually the possibility of a forfeiture of a game for an NFL team. Um, so with that said, how will you handle a forfeiture as it pertains to providing additional roster spots, maybe additional starter spots for teams um, if they are part of a forfeited game? And another follow-up question that we have received several times from other team owners in the league is um, if there is a player on one's team that you know contracts COVID-19 and is an unvaccinated player, will that team be punished as well? So uh, I'll start with the challenger, Sam Olson. How will you handle these things? Um, I'm going to take the second part of that question first. Um, I do not believe that our team owners should be punished uh, for the unvaccination of, of players um, sheerly from the standpoint of, although we can, uh, can debate this later, I, I don't think it's something that we have a lot of control over. Um, but that being said, uh, to get kind of back to the first part of the question, um, I don't believe that there should be any open roster spots. I don't believe that there should be uh, any additional um, things for us to consider uh, if a team does have to forfeit because of a COVID-19 policy. I think that has to be the world we live in now, and, and that's in your drafting and your free agent pickups, that you need to know who's vaccinated and who's not. They've done a pretty – so far the NFL has done a pretty decent job of kind of explaining or we've been able to find out through media sources who is vaccinated who isn't who's in those protocols who's not and i think that just has to be another thing that we all have all of our owners and, and our gms have to go through in a weekly basis of setting their lineups um so i don't think we should be punished for if someone does have co contracts covid uh but i think that if a team does forfeit or if a player is not eligible because of covid that's on you for not knowing that player status coming into the week all right. Uh, incumbent Commissioner Zach Eicht in your response. Yeah, I think I think uh, challenger Sam Olson bring this up. Uh, a lot of great points here. Um, I, I do think that, you know, moving forward, uh, COVID is going to remain just because I know we have a lot of bozos around the league who um, are refusing to play their part in ending uh, ending it. Um, however, I will say that uh, given the, the wide availability of vaccines, um, I don't think that we can treat uh, a COVID illness any differently than um, somebody going out with any other injury or illness before a game. Um, there isn't going to be any additional roster spots. And uh, as much as it sucks, it, but if somebody were to go out, say, on, before a Monday night game with the flu, um, I guess make sure to have somebody that can fill that flex position um, as, as the, as the week goes on um, in the case of uh, a whole team forfeiting, I think it's the same thing uh, that's going to be announced prior to kickoff. It's not like they're going to start the game and then cancel the game uh, after the first quarter. So just making sure to check your lineups is going to be absolutely key here. Um, you know, we did get rid of the COVID IR specific spots um, during our constitutional review that, uh, seemed to be the direction we were going. Uh, I would be interested in having a league vote on whether or not we should reinstitute having one or two additional COVID specific IR spots. Um, but I, I still think that as far as a week to week basis, uh, it is incumbent on team owners to be checking their lineups and being aware of their player status. All right. All right. Great points brought up by both there. Um, now I'm going to get to the most common question that I received from team owners um, and in, in varying tones and uh, uh, phrasing, if you will. Um, the, the most popular question that was directed at Challenger Sam Olson, um, specifically in regards to the effort, the energy, the time and um, the you know, resources available that Commissioner Zach Eichten has created for the league, whether it be the database, whether it be all of the marketing initiatives he has um, instigated. Um, clearly, he has put in some serious time into creating the league what it is now. And the commissioner for 2021 and beyond 
we'll have to maintain those initiatives or I, and obviously the mission would be to continue to expand. So challenger Sam Wilson, how would you live up to uh, those expectations and how would you continue to drive those initiatives forward? Yeah, no. And I, I think uh, my opening statement kind of laid this out perfectly that uh, they are very big shoes to fill. Uh, I mean, commissioner Zach Eichton has been uh, what this league has needed from its inception uh, to the, to the current day. Um, but my, my plan moving forward, uh, to fill those shoes is not to just fill them by myself, uh, but is to, to commission by committee. Um, that is kind of something I've, I've done in my, uh, my time as being a, a starter and a, and a commissioner of the, the Collegeville cup, which I know a large portion of our, our owners are members of that, uh, golf, uh, group organization as well. Um, but it's, it's utilizing everybody that is within, uh, our community of owners and what their specific skills bring, uh, bring to it and allowing them to, to showcase that. Um, I mean, Drew, with, with what you've been able to do, uh, with the social media stuff when you're helping Zach here and with, uh, with the Collegeville cup, uh, Zach with his amazing database, uh, Zach with just his, his sheer, uh, interview skills to be able to, to devote more time to the podcast if he's no longer commissioner. Uh, John Stevens with the with the analytics and the and the the takes on on those um, those podcasts and stuff like that. Uh, that that's kind of my plan moving forward is uh, to to take on the on the role of commissioner. Obviously, at all the the buck stops with you, but uh, to definitely use the the talents, the time, treasure, and uh, time, talent, and treasure of all of our owners and GMs throughout the league uh, to, to not only fulfill the shoes that Zach would be leaving, uh, but also to, to be able to grow um, and grow more cohesive and, and to utilize everybody. Incumbent Commissioner Zach Eichton, um, do you feel that challenger Sam Olson has what it takes to continue to take this, this league to the next level, the way that you started it? <clears throat> Now, uh, th there's there's a certain amount of dedication that that Sam brings to the table, um, and as as he's laid out, he is commissioner of an additional uh, an additional league um, that that he runs, um, it, and it is a uh, more physical league than our fantasy football league, of course. Um, but I, th I think what uh, what I really want to focus on here is uh, just continuity. Um, between commissioners and the content that we have. Um, every time there's there's a switch in a, in a role, it takes people quite a bit of time to get up to speed on where the previous person left off in that role. And uh, as we come into this, you know, this critical year of fantasy football, I think right now uh, continuity is is the most important uh, portion of this. Uh, as Sam said, I've relied on I've relied on partners to help help produce content and. Um, help me when when needed. We of course had our assistant commissioner election last year. Um, you know, AC Lawrenson has been a huge boon to the league um, with his uh, spicy hot takes and, and general uh, agitation, uh, making sure that people are uh, actually participating and, and doing things uh, well in the league. Uh, of course, we have our content uh, creation team um, with the, the Rat Hole podcast and Pong Star Studios. And of course, uh, props to everybody who participates week to week. But um, that's all not possible if there's not one person running the show. So uh, by committee is great, but you need a strong leader of that committee, a strong chair, or strong commissioner as it may be. And I'm that person. Challenger Sam Olson, do you have a rebuttal? No, I, I think, I think Zach makes a, makes a good point, but uh, that, that we need, we need to utilize everybody's talents and that we're our, our, as a collective whole, we have so many different uh, walks of life for people with different uh, skill sets um, that you, you need that committee and you need to be able to branch out and, and ask those people for, for help to, to make this thing move forward. Um, but I also believe that I am, I'm a strong enough leader uh, to get that done. Uh, my track record speaks for itself uh, with my resume of, of what I've accomplished in my life to this point, uh, being a, a SAC president, uh, the commissioner of the Collegeville Cup, uh, captain of the St. John's golf team. I mean, I can, I can list a, a bunch of stuff. I worked in events for two years uh, for the PGA Tour Champions event. I know what it, what it takes to run a group of people and, and to make things happen. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, this next question comes from an anonymous team team owner. Um, will not reveal who it is, but um, the question is: Will you advocate for the use of tight ends in the wide receiver slot? And a follow up to that question: Which team has the tightest end? Is the question. So I will start with <laughs> incumbent commissioner Zach Eichton on that one. Uh, the, the answer to the first question is, is just a hard no. Uh, tight ends have we have our own uh, spot for a tight end on each team. Um, I would say, you know, this league has, has an abundance of tight ends. Um, but I mean, if, if we're all being honest, the tightest end has to go to uh, Brennan, big man, Swan, um, obviously has, has the tightest end of the group. Um, but no, we will not be having tight ends in the wide receiver spot. Not on my watch. Challenger Sam Olson. Uh, I will agree with Zach that a tight end in a wide receiver spot is just crazy. Uh, I don't believe that that they're not the same position, thus they should not be treated the same in fantasy football. Um, that being said, I would not rule out the possibility of bringing it to a league vote or bringing it up in the next constitutional amendment of adding another roster spot for a second tight end. Um, I'm not saying that I am for that, but I would be willing to, to listen uh, to that, to that pitch. If this, anonymous team owner would like to bring it to the commissioner's attention. Um, But no, a a tight end is not in the wide receiver spot. Um, And I would, I would also have to agree with commissioner Eichner that, uh, that Brennan Swan definitely has the tightest end of all of us. And he's definitely listening. So I'm glad that we picked him. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. The the one guy who probably will not participate in, in viewing this before casting a vote uh, is, is Brennan. And if you are Brennan vote for me, Hey buddy. (laughs) <laughs> a direct not, sure if that's, the not sure if that's good etiquette for a debate there challenger sam uh, yeah. okay next question here this is uh, a little bit more of a serious league matter um commissioner zach eichton has been very um outward about his desire to increase trade activity in the league into 2021 um so i'll, I'll send this one over to challenger sam Olson first um so a do you you know, do you want to also ignite trade activity in this league? And uh, B, do you think it's a good idea to have as much trade activity or more um, compared to, you know, last year? Um, I think the, the, the free market of the, of the trade market and the free agency, I believe is something that we want to, to bolster. I think the trading between teams, uh, which was, I think a great move into the sleeper, uh, platform uh with this league was to be able to allow trading and draft picks uh into future years i think that is has really helped ignite the trade uh the trade talks and, and, and everything um i i am definitely a fan of trading i think we need to 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 keep a level of trading that that keeps the league competitive um anything specific that i would do to increase trade or to promote trade i'm not really sure if that is the commissioner's role um to necessarily uh, try and intervene in the in the market that way, but uh, but I, I certainly am a fan of the the, the trade um, levels that we have been at uh, the last year and a half or so. Um, I think it makes I think it makes one for great content, and I also think it, it just makes uh, makes for a better, more cohesive league, and and also helps the the uh, the talent uh, placement. Commissioner Eichton, uh, you know, and again, you've been very expressive about trying to increase trade activity. Uh, just curious if you did have any ideas specifically that as commissioner, you would enact um, policies, rules, et cetera, into the league um, or, you know, what type of ideas did you have to kind of try to ignite more trades, um, which seems to be your desire? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, I think that um I would agree with with Sam on it. It's not necessarily the commissioner's role to interfere individually in between trades. I think my record stands for itself. Um, If we go back to Tradegate uh, last year, which ended up uh, resulting in a rule change, um, my position during that debate uh, was that it's nobody's uh, prerogative to interfere with anybody else's individual trades, regardless of if they would, as an individual, make a different decision. I stand by that. the 
rules and, and policies, I think that I have uh, instituted already some, some things that uh, I'd like to just highlight in this. Um, having uh, a best trade award uh, during last year's award ceremony um, was of course one of the big ones, um, as well as doing some trade analysis already for the Rat Hole podcast uh, this year and really diving down into the uh, sort of the meta game of how, how it has a trade impacted um, one's team and going through um, the entire cycle of that trade to, to determine uh, ultimate winners and, and discussing those um, th through the content that we create here at Pong Star Studios. Um, I think that by expressing those things and, and having a, a real highlight on that uh, encourages people to participate uh, in trades. I hope that we get more substantive trades this year. Um, there were a few last year and already this year that um, are in the database because they are in the game data that aren't real trades necessarily. I, I look at a Matt Ryan uh, for nothing, literally nothing trade or uh, um, Tariq Cohen for Peyton Barber after Tariq Cohen was on IR for the remainder of the year. Um, and one of those of course was my trade, but uh I think I think looking for some for some more substantive trade is is where I would where I would encourage people to um, uh, participate and maybe be a little less uh, holding on to their to their big name players. Okay, okay, very interesting. Uh, as somebody who made a few trades last year, uh, I'm all for trades. I just wanted to get your take the take from both the incumbent and the challenger if there was any thoughts specifically on that, but. Um, so this this next question, um, actually, I'm going to refer back a little bit to earlier in the debate um, when you know we had the question from the anonymous team owner about tight ends. And um, one thing that uh, Challenger Sam Olson brought up was that he would uh, be willing to bring it to uh, the floor to debate as a league and to vote on uh, in terms of adding um, you know tight ends to the receiver spot. And Commissioner Zach Eichton uh, vehemently shook his head at that idea. Um, and it seems to be a common theme for him in shaking his head at, um, you know, possible ideas thrown up because, um, or, and, or listening to the league, because, you know, he's mentioned before the idea of individual, individual defensive players and vehemently the rest of the league has said no yet commissioner Zach Eichton repeatedly brings it up. So, uh, commissioner Eichton, uh, this maybe suggests you're not very, uh, you know, you don't listen to your team owners very much. Um, what is your response to the anonymous team owner that did pose this question? Can I, can I butt in for just one second? I did not say that uh, I would bring a league vote on tight ends being in the wide receiver spot. I said possibly a, an additional tight end spot. Just okay. want to clarify. Important that. clarification. Thank you. Challenger Sam Olson. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, my record on IDP speaks for itself. We're looking to increase competition um, and increase the diversity of players. Uh, the, the idea of IDP is so that uh, folks feel like they should be paying attention to both sides of the ball um, and being rewarded uh, for individual defensive performances as opposed to the defense perhaps playing like uh, not very well and then getting one one pick and, and saving their day versus an individual player having a lot more control over that. The the point of two tight ends um, would not be increasing competition. It would just increase variability into a very uh very low pool of players that are startable in that tight end position. Uh, I wouldn't I would not uh, be in favor of, of bringing that to a league vote uh, for that for that matter just because that wouldn't be increasing competition as much as it would be increasing disparity between teams. Um, with all due respect, Commissioner Eichten, uh, I don't know if you answered the question, uh, and maybe I didn't pose it as clearly as I uh, was hoping, but um, I guess that the criticism here from team owners is that you do not listen to, uh, well, the team owners, uh, and that uh, right here we had an example of Challenger Sam Olson said he'd be willing to uh, perhaps look at you know, a vote on something to, to kind of make a compromise. And then also with the individual defensive players, you repeatedly are told no, um, that the team owners do not want that. And yet you continue to bring it up. Uh, so that's the, the question here in the criticism. So how do you respond to that specific criticism that you do not listen to your team owners? Yeah, the unfounded allegations that I don't listen to the team owners uh, is, is quite frankly, um, farcical. Uh, it is just uh, an outrageous claim uh, put out to lambast me by uh, some some clearly perturbed team owners. Uh, 
what it comes down to is whenever there is a league decision, um, I put this to a vote, um, whether it be keeper gate, whether it be trade gate, whether it be even constitutional review. Um, I believe that this league has taken more votes uh, than any league I have ever been a part of um, for deciding rules and uh, dealing with controversy. Uh, these unfounded allegations are quite frankly preposterous and uh, the framing of this question was also ridiculous. Hmm. Okay. Commissioner Eichton, I'm not sure I appreciate that response and attacks at the end there. Um, however, we'll, we'll move on to the next question. I think it's best for all of us if we move on. <laughs> um, this is for a challenger, Sam Olson, uh, from again, an anonymous team owner. Um, the concern here is that this team owner feels that your lack of creativity and ambition shown by the Googling of your team name year after year before settling on, well, the Google team names for your team name could be a concern, um, as we try to grow this league. So how do you respond to that? Uh, criticism of you uh, again suggesting that you're not creative or ambitious and therefore would not be able to keep up uh, the progress that Commissioner Eichton has created here. I, I think the the way that the the shot at me or the 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 supposed shot at me is worded is actually proving that I am creative. Uh, I I'm willing to to go out on a limb and just go uh, to to take an idea in my head. Um, of wanting some some kind of funny pun um, with what my team roster looks like uh, or who I think I'm going to draft and, and going that route um, and using the resources at my disposal. Uh, we're all late 90s kids. We, we grew up with the internet. If you if you want something and, but you, you can't quite put it all together, you, you go to the Google machine and you make sure that what you do is is, is something that is at least going to get a laugh or a smirk out of somebody. And then the, the Google team names that it ended up becoming it is the perfect bit because I had done it for so long. Um, and to my detriment, I started drafting players just for the puns. And there, there lies the record that I've had for the last couple of years. But, uh, but it, it was for the bit, the, the whole point of, of this content creation is, is, is for the bit and, and to get people to, to smirk, to laugh, to, to interact with your team name. And, and I think the Google team names really, really truly embodies that, uh, that uh, interaction and, and that, that goofiness uh, that, I, that I'm bringing as, a, as an owner to this league. Um, so I, I think that I, I am creative. I use the, the tools at my disposal um, and I have the drive to, to see the, see the reward of what I'm doing at the, at the end and, and see the long game of, of, uh, of those problems. Commissioner Eichten, um, do you feel this was a fair criticism of challenger Sam Olson? I, I feel like what it was a fair criticism. And I would just like to, to remind the, uh, the voting audience uh, that the Google team names was actually my bit that I told Sam to put as his name. Um, and that the creativity that Sam is uh, showing that he, he has for his bits um, was again, uh, not of his own creation. And it actually, once again, outsourced uh, to some sort of committee process. Um, again, just highlighting the fact that, uh, you know, that, that lack of creativity uh, is definitely a weakness of the challenger. I, have any I mean, oh, go I was just say, I've, I've been, I've been about the committee this entire time. Um, I, I love, I love the, the community, the, the bringing together of everybody's talents, going to the person who is the stand-up comic in the group to make sure that your name is funny when that was obviously what I was going for in those early days of, of Googling uh, team name puns uh, with players. I was trying to get that that joke that was going to stick um, and then bringing it to somebody who whose talent is joke telling uh, is, is bringing out my point of, I may not always have the best ideas myself, but I'm going to make sure that I go to the person that has the best idea and helps me implement that idea moving forward. Alternatively, you could just vote for the person with the best idea in the first place. As moderator, I don't think I'm allowed to say that, but that was certainly in my head, Commissioner. Uh, the next question I have is actually for Commissioner Zach Eichten. Uh, 
so there is a conspiracy theory floating around throughout the league uh, amongst team owners. Um, and th- th- this is unfounded. There are no, there is no hard evidence of this, but uh, they find it interesting that the commissioner um, after a very rocky start last year, uh, actually changing his team name to gluten frauds uh, suddenly had a very magical uh, rest of the season that actually turned into an unfathomable championship run. Um, and so how do you respond to team owners, multiple team owners, that is, um, that suggested that they may not trust you moving forward after what seems like an unfathomable run again to a championship after uh, seemingly out of the running uh, a few weeks into the season? Uh, well, I, I would like to remind the league, uh, of course, that my championship run started off uh, wonderfully. Um, I was the only team to go 3-0 and at the beginning of the season. Um, and having started 3-0, and no previous team uh, in league history starting 3-0 and ever missed the postseason. Uh, there was a rocky middle. It uh, wasn't necessarily a rocky start, but there was a, a period of time, you know, weeks 7 through 9, um, where there was uh, – no wins to be found um, at all uh, throughout that process, which of course uh, is, is really tough. Um, just throughout that period of time, uh, Tony scored his highest points uh, in the league uh, against me. Um, we, we of course had the, the nail biter uh, between myself and Noel. Um, and then one, one single match um, I, within that streak there where uh, it just, it, it, the cards just didn't fall my way um, week nine against uh, against Troop. So really, really, it was, um, you know, just it, it was more unluckiness that I lost rather than uh, poor performance. Um, and, and and props to the team owners that, that put up uh, great numbers against me uh, during during those uh, bad stretches. But um, when it came when push came to shove, um, you know, my last my last four games, I didn't score under 125 points. Um, including week 13 against Josh, which was a must win for me to be able to make playoffs. Um, and I achieved, you know, 92 or 91.68% of my uh, max possible points for, uh, which is, which is a great run. Uh, I, I stand by my team's performance um, despite their fraudulent behavior during the mid season. And uh, they had obviously hearts of champions by the end. Challenger Sam Wilson, are you concerned at all? Um uh, with the criticism here that uh, Commissioner Eichten may or may not have. Well, it's not really a criticism. It's more of a conspiracy theory that, again, uh, this is not, you know, there's no hard evidence of this, but does this worry you at all uh, just for the future of the league at all? Um, I don't, I don't believe that it, I don't believe that it's uh problemsome for the future of the league. And, and nor do I, I believe the conspiracy theory that he had anything uh, to, to do with this as a commissioner. Um, I think as a team owner and a GM, he just hit a hit, like he said, a, a streak of bad luck. Um, and he, he was able to turn it around there towards the end. Um, now, if there were any kind of claim that uh, positions were changing last minute or uh, there were any roster changes that, that went through at the buzzer, that would be another story, but I, I don't see any evidence of that. Uh, so I, I have no, no issue in the, uh, in the confidence level of, of Commissioner Hikton uh, in the fair play regard. Okay. Okay. Now the I appreciate the, that. the The last uh, topic here that I have is going to be for both of you, um, and it pertains to there is a concern among multiple team owners here uh, that you know there was so the, there, in the middle of last season there was a rule change that took place um, in which it had to do with the, the trade period uh, where. Um, I don't I remember exactly the week of the year, but essentially the uh, veto period of the trades uh, was shortened essentially from, I think the two days that it was to essentially nothing, the trade would go through automatically. And at that moment, as soon as both teams accepted the trade, um, the concern is that it, it, in a way it, it, the validation of the season, I'm guessing I'm, I'm putting these words together from multiple requests to, t- to discuss this topic here. So um, the validation of the season is a little bit decreased because of the different rules from one half of the season to the other. So I'll start with the challenger, Sam Olson, and I'll say, do you think that rules should be altered or changed? Um, even if they may benefit the league as a whole, but do you think they should be changed in the middle of a season? And does it um, kind of take away from 
the previous weeks of that season when you change a rule? That is a, that's a loaded question. Um, I think that, I mean, every situation is, 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 uh, is unique and it, it's something that as the commissioner back to back, you have to be, um, or in every decision, uh, you have to, to bring up new information and you have to make the best decision that you can make. Uh, but that being said, I believe, I personally believe that rules should not be changed mid season. Um, I think once you've, once you've kicked off, uh, that, that first game, um, what is, what is set in stone is set in stone, uh, until that, until the championship bell is rung. Um, and then at that point, uh, it's a, it's a completely open book to rewrite that being said, do I think, uh, after the decision last year to make that rule change in the middle of it, do I think that diminishes anything? Do I think that, um, adds an asterisk to, to anyone's record, to, to anyone's championship? I do not believe so. I believe it was early enough in the season uh, that people who felt like they were disadvantaged in the, in the start of the season uh, with the way the rule was written um, had plenty of time to, to make up uh, enough. uh, They had enough time to make up that difference uh, to be able to utilize the new rule and and to take advantage of the new rule. Um, But no, as a, as an overall ideal, I would, I would choose not to change rules uh, mid season. I think that is uh, the way our, our constitution reads and the, and the way it is supposed to be laid out and interpreted. Um, I believe that that is something that it, we have, a, we have a wide variety of able of a bit of availability. There we go to change any rule that we want. As long as we have a league uh, majority uh, of, of owners to vote on it, I, I believe we have plenty of time to do this uh, throughout the way our constitution is laid out that I believe in those 17 weeks of the season, we do not need to truly mess with anything. Uh, I, I think it, it, it certainly disadvantages people. Um, but uh, that, that's just my personal stance. Um, that would be what I would bring as a commissioner. Uh, but then again, like I said, every situation is completely uh, individual and has to be looked at from all angles in its own isolated chamber. Um, so I'm not saying that I'm rigid one way or the other, uh, but I would strongly stand with the do not change rules mid season. That's what the off season is for. So challenger samples, before we get to commissioner Zach Eichten, um, would you say that you disagreed with the rule change last season uh, since it was in the middle of the season? Uh, just wanted to clarify where your stance is uh, to make sure, you know, if it does differ for commissioner Zach Eichten that the, the voting audience is aware of that. Yeah, I, I believe uh, I believe the rule change was the correct rule change. I, I believe we got that right um, as a as a as a league um, that the the trade uh, processing period, what, however it was worded, um, was not necessary, uh, and it was something that uh, we we truly got the we got the rule correct. Um, I did disagree with the timing of it. Um, I believe that it, it, it was one of those where I think you could, could, I mean, it should have waited till the end of the year. Um, but then again, it was early enough in the year that it, anybody who was truly disadvantaged by the, the rule previous had time and, and had the ability with the new rule, um, to, to make up that difference in a way. Uh, but no, I, I was not a fan of the timing of it, but, but truly enjoyed and, and was much was in favor of the actual rule change itself. Okay. Commissioner Zach Eichton, can you please give uh, your perspective on making that change last year? Yeah. Um, do you feel it was the right move? And would you in the future make rule changes in the middle of the season uh, if you deem that they're needed? Uh, yeah. So I think that this is a really, a really great question. Um, and for full transparency, um the 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 wording of the of that rule change there was two parts um and you could vote separately uh per part um during during that um it was october 14th of last year when we had this rule debate and change um the the first question read um should we abolish the trade review period and it was uh keep the the original one day a uh, full day, one Gregorian calendar day. Um, so that was, it, it just had to be on there for one day. It wasn't 
two days, um, but sometimes it became two days based on the timing of when the trade went through. Um, and then the second question of that was assuming the trade period uh, was voted to be eliminated, should that review period be abolished immediately or remain in place through the 2020 season? Um, and as a, as a unit, as a group, um, 80% of the league voted to abolish that trade review period um, and 80% of the league voted to abolish the trade review period immediately. Um, this wasn't an individual decision uh, by myself as commissioner. And um, I think if we were to unseal the votes, I think Sam's ballot might show something differently um, than what he just described um, as being opposed to the timing. Um, can't verify that for certain, but I am pretty certain that I know. Uh, That's all, that, is, that is gross speculation on your part. There is, there is no way to fully verify it other than the open ballot I have in front of me on um, whether or not Sam did it. And I'm not going to say one way or another where he voted, but I do not believe that he was within the 20% of the group that voted. Uh, this is a blatant abuse of power to be able to see something that not any of our other viewers or any of the other league owners can see it. Mr. Eichton, I, I, I'm making the move as moderator to take this subject of, of uh, Challenger Sam Olson's vote on this topic last year out, out of the discussion. Of course, of course. And nobody can verify that for certain. Um, it is all speculation as to whether Sam voted one way or another. Um, and of course, we would not unseal the ballot uh, to determine that. So this is off uh, last year's memory um, from, from the debate and discussion. Um, the, what, it, what it comes down to is uh, during periods of hot contention, uh, my, my stance as commissioner has always been to put it to a league vote. And the speculation of whether or not uh, I overstepped as commissioner, I would say 80% of the league ended up agreeing with the move. Um, and uh, that, is, that is still 20%. Two of, our, two of our 10 team owners did not agree. Um, and I respect those, uh, those disagreements. I think that there were uh, real uh, hesitations with making a rule change. Um, but when the majority of the league, more than a super majority, actually, four out of five of our team owners wanted to make this move, um, I think it was the, the correct move to make. Um, and I would uh, do it again um, in, a, in a similar situation uh, if the vote was, was that overwhelming. All right. All right. Well, uh, we're going to start to wrap things up here. We're going to get to closing arguments here. Uh, we're going to kind of let you guys each have the floor one more time here. Um, so I'll begin with the challenger this time uh, in the opening statements. I started with the incumbent, but I will start with the challenger here in the closing statements, closing arguments here from challenger, Sam Olson. Uh, Sam, the floor is yours. Thank you, Drew. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for moderating. Uh, this has been a great debate. Um, I feel like our, our league owners and GMs are going to be, well informed as they cast their ballots here at the end of this week. Um, I would just like to say, please vote no matter what, please cast your ballot in a timely fashion so that we can get the results done. Uh, we can get the posts ready. We can get everything content wise distributed and ready to go uh, before the weekend hits. Um, when, with that being said, obviously I would, I would love a vote for myself. Uh, I feel like I've laid out a, a pretty good strategy for how I would take over uh, after somebody who has been in the seat for so long and has done so much for this league. Uh, but, but having a fresh set of eyes uh, and, a, and a fresh set of ideas uh, moving forward um, is what this league needs. It needs a little bit of a breath of fresh air uh, to really make that next step uh, as we, as we continue to grow uh, into our, into our full, full potential here as a league, as the, as the Pawn Stars uh, uh, fantasy football league. So um Thank you. Thank you guys for having me and uh, just, just go vote. Commissioner Zach Eichten, your closing statements. Uh, thank you, uh, Drew. Uh, and to, to my challenger, I respect the gumption uh, to, to put your name out there for, for such an important role um, within, within the group. And uh, I, I appreciate the challenge. Um, it keeps me humble um, as we move forward here. Uh, I think that the vote uh, is going to be uh, clear here. Um, I think that our team owners are looking for stability. Um, they're looking for creativity and of course, uh, looking for uh, someone to continue to do the good work that they have already done. Um, 
Sam, it's, it's been uh, an honor having you up here on the debate stage. And I would agree with his closing statement to please go vote. Um, of course, we, uh, we always appreciate voting here. Uh, the sign off of, of the rat hole for a full year was remember to vote. Uh, so, and then thank you for voting uh, post-election. So uh, just as a sign off with, with my signature line, thanks for voting. All right. Well, our, our audience has listened and or watched uh, the entire debate tonight. Uh, so with, with, with that being said, we've heard from both uh, the incumbent and the challenger. And I echo the statement, uh, the, ent- the sentiment uh, to go out and vote, uh, which uh, Commissioner Zach Eichten will give the instructions on how to vote uh, shortly. Uh, but that's all I have for tonight. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for submitting questions as well. I obviously did produce a very lively debate tonight. So I also want to thank Commissioner Zach Eichten and Challenger Sam Molson for joining this evening and again, giving us that lively debate, uh, very en- engaging and very encouraging for the future of the league. So thank you both. And uh, I look forward to seeing the voting results. Thank you.